Hey, what's up guys? It's Jason checking in here for my second YouTube debut. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I started working for NASA and how you can too. Now, I realize that it's not everyone's goal to work for NASA, but I also know that everyone does have some kind of really big goal or dream that they want to achieve. And so even if your goal isn't to work for NASA, but it's something that seems maybe just as impossible, then this video is still for you. So I'm going to go ahead and share some of my best tips and tricks for achieving goals, setting goals, and everything like that. And it's going to apply to really anything. So I mean, not just working for NASA, but maybe you want to learn a foreign language. Maybe you want to pick up a new fitness routine and transform your body. Uh, really just anything that you can imagine. Some really big, seemingly monstrous goal. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you can set that goal, work towards achieving it, and actually accomplish it. So let's get right into it. So it's really simple. The most important thing, the number one thing that you need to know and do if you want to work for NASA or achieve any other big goal is to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe so that you catch my future videos. Just kidding, of course. The most important thing really is just to try. Uh, and not just try, but go after it as if your life depends on it. And you might be wondering, well, why would you do that? And a simple answer, because it does. And so like I said earlier, the most important thing, no matter if you want to work for NASA or you have any other big goal that you want to achieve, is to first set the vision. If you don't have some goal written down uh, that you want to achieve, then you're not going to be moving towards anything. And so that's the number one step, is to set your vision. So mine actually started when I was about 12 years old. I was driving in the car with my mom, uh, I guess long before I was able to drive, so she was driving at that time. And she told me a fun fact about the gold visor of an astronaut's helmet. And so she, she said something about, I think, how much it cost or something like this. And so I went home afterwards and having, you know, this, this fun fact she told me really piqued my curiosity about it. So I went on the Internet and I was Googling this and I came across a Wikipedia page. It must have been something like an astronaut suit. And so I'm reading this page and I see a little link down on the side. And it was a hyperlink to another Wikipedia page called aerospace engineering. Okay, so that's pretty much my vision. Now, the reason that a vision is so important is because it's going to help you stay focused throughout this entire pursuit. So my good friend Arnold Schwarzenegger, he likes to say that the biggest ship in the entire world, it's not going to go anywhere if it doesn't have a destination. And so what it's really saying is that if you don't have a goal, if you don't have a concrete plan to achieve that goal, you're not gonna get anywhere. And so that's the number one step here is to set the vision, set the goal and decide on it, right? Because once you have a goal and once you have that vision, it's going to keep you focused on the pursuit of it. And when the obstacles, the hard times come and they are going to come, it's going to be some maybe physical hard times, some mentally hard times. When these obstacles arise, having that vision in the back of your head, is going to let you just climb through them, go over them and, and keep moving towards your goal. So one of the biggest steps that you can do, one of the most helpful things you can do once you have that vision is to surround yourself with some positive influences that are doing the kinds of things that you want to do. So for example, let's say you want to uh, become a bodybuilder. I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. Then, you know, surround yourself with those kind of people, the people that are doing already what you want to accomplish. And so maybe you say, well, I don't know any bodybuilders in my everyday life. And so even if you don't have those people around you in your everyday life, there's still plenty of ways that you can find them. So, I mean, for example, my personal mentors are people like Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you might be wondering, well, do I really know all these people in real life? No, of course not. But there's plenty of ways to get their knowledge, get their insight, uh, and really use that to help you go after your own goals. And so I'm talking about things like buying their books. I mean, a lot of these people, they have biographies. You go and read about them and you get their blueprint to life, everything that's worked for them. And these are massively successful people. And so you just accumulate the knowledge that they've learned over decades of their life and you get it in a few hours of reading a book. You could also do something like Audible, which is uh, you can download these books and just play them while you're at the gym working out or, or whatever you want to do, maybe in transit to work back and forth. Uh, or you could even go on YouTube and listen to these things for free. A lot of these people, they have their thoughts, um, just random comments that they have and different quotes, good stuff like that is all on YouTube for you to find and listen to whenever you have a few free minutes. So what you really want to start surrounding yourself with these kind of positive influences and use that to further push you towards your goal. Another thing that I really like to do, especially with the YouTube, is to listen to uh, types of motivational speakers. So people that talk about things like goal setting, they talk about things like 
um, going after what you want to do and working kind of, you know, planning each and every day and working towards those things. So these are people like Les Brown, um, Mel Robbins, David Goggins, people that have had massive success going after what it is that they want to do in life. And then maybe even one of my favorite ones is Zig Ziglar. And so Zig Ziglar, he has a book called See You at the Top, which I highly recommend. And in there, he talks about the seven steps of goal setting. And so what I want to do now is I want to go through the seven steps of goal setting, uh, but I want to apply it to something different than working for NASA. So like I said, you know, a lot of the tips and tricks here, you can apply to any goal that you might have. And so when I wanted to work for NASA, a lot of these tips and tricks I hadn't developed yet. And so that's why it took me from the time I was 12 years old until much, much later in life to get there. Uh, but now that I have all these things bundled up and I make use of them, I can set a goal that seems just as audacious and achieve it in a relatively short amount of time. So what I want to do is go through the seven steps for goal setting with learning Russian. So the first step is to identify the goal. So for me, I decided I want to learn Russian. The second step then is to identify the benefits of reaching the goal or attaining the goal. So in this case, for learning Russian, the benefits are that I would instantly be able to talk to a few hundred million more people in the world. And also I could travel to a little bit more than a dozen extra countries with no additional help, no tour guide or anything like that. The third step for goal setting is to define the obstacles. So in the case of Russian, what are the obstacles? Well, it's probably one of the hardest languages that an American speaker can go and try and learn. The fourth step is identifying what skills or knowledge you need to acquire in order to attain the goal. So for Russian, this is pretty straightforward, right? I need grammar, I need vocabulary, but I also need a comprehension that could keep up with a native speaker's speech rate. And I also need to be able to speak at that same rate so that I don't bore the person that I'm talking with so that they stay you know, engaged in the conversation. Step number five, is identifying which groups or people you need to work with to reach your goal. So for my example, I decided, okay, I'm going to start studying Russian at Penn State. I'm gonna work with the Russian department at Penn State, and that's really gonna be the main group that I'm working with. Now, alongside that, I knew that I wanted to travel to Russia and spend some time there to really lock it in and get the total immersive experience. So I decided I was going to start working with the group on campus that kind of runs those programs for study abroad, uh, the scholarship programs to do so and everything like that. Step number six is to create an action plan. So I knew that I was going to go back to school and I said, okay, I'm going to take Russian one. That's going to be the start of all this. And then I'm just going to study for it all the time. I'm going to look for as many people to speak with as I can all the time. Uh, I'm going to start watching some Russian TV shows and just practice that comprehension and try to get my ears to speed up to listening to the language. So step number seven, then the last and final step, is to set a deadline. For me, when I decided I was going to start studying Russian, I said, okay, two years from now, I want to have studied in Russia, and I even picked a university. I said, I'm gonna study at the Moskovsky Gasundarsvin Universitet in Moscow. And so that was my seven steps for achieving the goal of learning Russian. And the end result was that uh, about a year and a half later, I ended up in St. Petersburg, Russia, one of the coldest places I have ever been to study Russian for four months in an intensive Russian language program. And so you can see, I mean, there, there's no way, absolutely no way that I would have achieved that getting to Russia and having it paid for by a government scholarship, which I was really fortunate enough to get. No way I would have been able to accomplish all that in that small amount of time had I not set up these seven steps and really thought about the whole process from the start and thinking through how to achieve all of it. Another important step here to achieving that vision is to make sure that you're making daily progress towards it. You want to make daily strides that get you closer to achieving that goal. So going back to the example of me trying to work for NASA, I had to figure out how am I going to move myself a little bit closer to that every single day. And the answer was pretty straightforward. I had to do really well in school. I had to make sure that I was meeting the right people and trying to get uh, the positive influences around me, whether that was professors in the aerospace engineering department or trying to meet some people that are hiring from NASA and different things like this. And I think for most things, it's pretty easy to pick one or two or three different things that you can use as a daily effort to try to move yourself closer. So going back to the Russian example, if you want to learn Russian, what should you do every day? Maybe watch one Russian TV show, maybe 
uh, get a Russian grammar book and read through a little bit of that. If you're able, if you're at a university or you have some kind of online way or a private tutor that you can take classes, maybe three days a week you're taking a Russian class and that's a big help as well. In another example, let's say you want to learn an instrument. If you want to learn piano, how are you going to get towards that vision? How are you going to move yourself closer every day? Very straightforward, right? Practice the piano every single day. So like I said, I applied to NASA every semester that I was at Penn State. And a lot of these times I didn't even hear back, uh, but I just kept applying. I kept applying. I kept developing myself, working harder, working harder in school, doing different things that I thought would move me closer and make me a stronger applicant. And I kept trying. I kept pushing through the applications. And I found one requisition that I thought I was pretty qualified for. So I tried to, uh, I kept applying to this one. And the first time I didn't hear back. The second time I applied, I didn't hear anything back. The third time I applied, um, and you know, this application was about as strong as I thought I was able to make it. I'd been working on this for a while. I'd been working on things that would specifically move me closer to being a good candidate for that job. And I remember, I'll never forget it. It was a Saturday morning. I was at Penn State, maybe around 8 a.m. I was already in the library to go study, and I'm checking my email. And I see an email there, and the email address is from NASA. And it says something along the lines of, Dear Jason, I work in the rotorcraft branch at the NASA Research Center, and we want you to come and do an internship with us this semester coming up. And so here I am, I don't know, 20 years old, eight years after I decided that I was going to try and work for NASA, and I have an email on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. that says, yep, you, you did it. And so, yes, of course, in this example, it took eight years to achieve that goal, which is a very long amount of time. And sometimes, I mean, if you set a, a big goal like that, sometimes it takes you that long, sometimes it takes longer. Uh, but using some of the tips and tricks that I talked about here today can really help you accelerate that timeline and have a better chance or have the best chance of, of reaching that goal. And another thing that I wanna throw in there is that whenever you try to do something like this, if it's learn a language, um, you know, get on some crazy fitness routine, or work for NASA. I think my other example that I used was sing on Broadway. Everyone around you is going to just think it's ridiculous. Uh, mo most people, I mean 99% of people, oftentimes even some people from your own family will think that some of these things just sound crazy and they'll try to discourage you from doing them and say, oh no, come on, it's too hard, too much time, um, waste of time, whatever it is. And so, you kind of just have to ignore all of that, right? Because a lot of times if people haven't gone out and done these things for themselves, it's just such an impossible task that they think they're helping you by discouraging you from doing it. And so a lot of times people would ask, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, I'm going to work for NASA. And you wouldn't believe the number of people that just thought that was the most ridiculous thing in the world. So a little bit of background, I come from a really small town. Uh, I think it was a population of 8,000 when I was growing up. And people just don't don't really go and do stuff like that. I mean, a lot of people from where I grew up just stay in that town, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, I had this goal to go and work for NASA, and so I was going to try to do it. And pretty much at every point along the way, I had people that just thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever. Uh, even people that said, "Like, come on, there, there's literally no way that you can achieve that." And so you just tune them out, forget about it, and go after it. Like I said earlier, go after it as if your life depends on it. And that's the best way, the best chance that you have at actually going and, and making it happen. So that's a few of the tips and tricks that I use now for setting goals uh, and to actually go out and achieve them. So one more thing, go ahead and comment below if you'd like to share what your goal, vision, or dream is so that we can start to keep each other accountable here. And at the same time, if you have a request for a future video, what you'd like me to cover or talk about, uh, really kind of more on the space theme. I'm going to probably start doing videos about different NASA programs and projects. Then please do feel free to comment that below as well. And I'll make sure that I answer every single one of those comments. So thank you for watching. Um, please do, if you enjoyed the video, please do give me a like below. That would really help the YouTube algorithm. Uh, and then also you can subscribe so that you catch my future videos. And if you'd like as well, hit the notification bell so that you can get reminders about those new videos coming out. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.